It was very still and lonely now beside the river. If any human had been here this hour, he would have remarked the strangeness of this winter's night, would have sensed perhaps the pulsing loneliness of this thing created of night and snow and loneliness. But he could not have felt the wonder and beauty without wishing to somehow arrest and make fast and secure the part of himself that would feel drawn to the something here. If you have watched a bird flying away in the dusk over your head on the mission birds have at this evening time, you will better understand how anyone in the night beside this river would feel hurt and frightened at being only what he was. He would feel only the sense of his corporal presence and would surely realize it insufficient to the knowledge needed to become a part of this thing of night and loneliness. He would have been a liver in cities, the definite little men who live in little cities built to a giant's plan. I would not speak of that. We are not snakes to crawl from out that which we are into what we cannot ever be. I am trying to say that the loneliness and desperate wisdom of the river this winter night would be an act and an achievement, not needing the presence of any human to call it into being. I spoke of the bird because I myself could not visualize the river in its impersonal life tonight, and I wish to set up something that you as well as I could understand, hoping in that way to find courage to go on to the saying of the thing that the river is. I thought to say it so you would understand, but I cannot. What I have to say has little to do with what the river is under its snow and ice tonight. I want to tell you of the death today of someone I love. After thinking of many ways in which it might be beautifully told, I finally decided to tell it in this way. You will understand that I do not feel about it in this way, but I have already told you that the mystery of the river is not to be in anything which I may say to you of it. It may be that only one such as myself, who has a direct communication from the river, could understand but there are no words to tell of. I thought of doing it in this way. I would write the history of this river, a history covering one day. Early this morning, I would say, there was a light fall of snow. Later in the day, a thick blanket of snow fell covering and obscuring all traces of the life which had moved over the ice. And finally, I would go on, toward evening, the snow ceased to fall, and what there was of everything that had been on the river today was now forever gone, ridden under in the stillness and the sleep of the snow. The loneliness I spoke of as being of the river is really mine, and I am trying to push it far enough to make it hers too. I cannot, you must see, do this by any method in the telling of it, but only by concentration of the few hints I have received by thinking of the river and the bird as somehow a message from her. And in the desire to tell this, without losing that sense of kinship with the loneliness of the river and the bird flying to the dusk, I thought of making the footprints in that early morning snow the record of a pilgrimage into the haven of this loneliness. But always I was brought up, leaning on this fabric of the idea, not being able to quite forget the tragic concreteness in the number of footprints coming down to the river's edge and the number of footprints which were made in leaving. That was to have been the history covering one day of the river in the snow. snow, snow. She, she had, had brown, brown hair. hair. 
and I was afraid that in the record of this day I could not, however hard I tried, forget that the footprints had ever been anything other than the symbols which I had made of them. Now in despair of ever telling this thing as it is to me, I would go to the river tonight and live for myself the story which I cannot tell. But I am afraid. Perhaps this is all empty and untrue. The strange thoughts which I have tried to make clear to you regarding how I feel with her dead are less strange, surely, than the careless gift of the river in taking her in death to be with the dead. I cannot tell you what it is I am trying to say. I want only to tell you that she is dead and that it is not possible for me to know this in the way I can feel the inhuman beauty of this river which has killed her. It is as though I am become heir to the reasoning of the river and the bird, and I cannot hope to tell you of it. In the morning, there were footprints leading down, but this is not the history of the river covering one day but I want only to tell you that she is dead and 